August. We have Simon Bolton from Aqualis uh, with us in studio this morning, uh, right next door to us, in fact. Uh, Simon, just uh, talk to us about this figure. Uh, on so many metrics, <laughs> oh, from a from a part rate, from uh, a full, t you know, a, an overall job creation number, yeah. it just seems well, as I, if so something's gone badly wrong. Well, when the read is, you know, almost five times out, you've got to wonder what either one one figure somewhere must be out of whack. But that's an incredible you know, number to come out and to mm -hmm. drop from 6.4 to 6.1. You know, it's almost like a yo-yo. Last month we were watching it go the other way, and it was all unemployment's going up, it's going up. Well, now we see 120,000 jobs created. It just seems incredible. This part rate, have you ever known it to kind of spike from, uh, as mentioned, you get increments. So, you know, we were currently sitting at 6.4. Uh, 64. Right? Yeah, I mean, we were, sorry, we were sitting at 64.8. Yeah, yeah. uh, now we go up to 65.1. It it's just incredible. 65.2. Yeah. But mm. this is going right to the heart of why people were thinking the data last month was distorted, mm. because yeah. the ABS changed the actively looking for work definition. So something in that participation rate is being ch changed. I mean, kind of the, the data obviously going into that is pretty, um, is kind of obviously different to what we've been looking at. So I think this is kind of confirming that that 6.4 figure, mm. which always seemed um, a bit out there last month, mm. I think that probably confirms some of the, uh, the suspicions out there. Vindication for those who said they just didn't believe it last month. As has been pointed out, we're back on level pegging with unemployment in the United States at 6.9%. <laughs> so scrap that discussion Sorry. from last month. <laughs> <That's> exactly. <laughs> you can kind of use that to your advantage now. <laughs> yeah, right. So you can bet your bottom dollar there is going to be a blue room in Canberra uh, media conference very soon with the Treasurer. Yeah, there wasn't last month. Exactly. There wasn't last when month. When it suits, there is, and there will be today. <laughs> so stand by. We'll cover that one when it's uh, announced. And Don't you worry. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so okay. we see this. Just to repeat, um, some of the data's on screen, but the big one is the unemployment rate drops to 6.1%. The participation rate jumps 0.4 of a percent to 65.2. You get the creation of 121,000 jobs in the economy just in the latest month. The, the, what, what is noise, disturbing, noise, though, is noise. that you're getting some respected commentators now jeering. Mm. Yeah. Uh, at these numbers, yes. saying the government's on track for a million new jobs by next Tuesday. Uh, honestly, did we become the laughing stock internationally because we can't gather data accurately? Carson, I don't know because we've sat here how many times yeah. over the months and years and you know raised eyebrows at the figures. But this but one's this one's way it's, beyond it's, anything we've, yeah. we've talked about. Isn't well, it? If we look at there are 31 yeah. days in the month, yeah, and we've created you know, 121,000 jobs. Right. Uh, the daily increase on that is just extraordinary. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure if the numbers, like Brooke says, there has been a change in the calculation at the ABS are using. Um, you would have thought though that would be indexed or recalibrated mm. so these sorts of jobs, uh, sorry, these sorts of leaps are you know, minimised. But yeah, just an incredible read there. I mean 6.4 last month we were all sort of hand in our head, sorry, hands on our heads saying, yeah. you know, that's dreadful, what are we going to do? The highest level for 12 years. But then to see 120,000 jobs created in a month, uh, that's just a, yeah. Mm. So. We went back to 92 cents on the, on the cross rate. I think what's important to get from you, um, kind of beyond, because this is noise now, we, yeah, we can yeah. say this is noise. We want to get from you kind of leading indicators where you think things are headed based on what your clients are saying, your kind of discussions yeah. you've, you've got going on. So we'll come back and do that with you, Simon. Let's quickly get the market reaction, though, because the Aussie dollar yeah. um, has moved on this one. Let's go to CMC Market Stockbroking. We've got Rick Spooner with us. Rick, uh, yeah, nice, nice, nice move back above 92. <laughs> Mike McCarthy looks. Dazzled by the the screens behind you, uh, punch <laughs> drunk. He's punch drunk. So he's he's, kind of, yeah. he looks shocked. He's kind of not moving. Um, but yeah, what, what are you making of the the moves so far? Uh, well, look, a uh, few things go through my head, Brooke. One is that rogue numbers are uh, one of the things that we traders have to deal with from time to time. Uh, I'd like to know what the revisions to past numbers are, but. Certainly this looks like a one-off, but even allowing for that, my suspicion is that the safest assumption here is to assume that, um, you know, trend growth in jobs growth is, looks as though it might be good enough to more or less hold the unemployment rate uh, around these low six levels for a while. Second thing that goes through my head is that next month's figure is now very important to uh, get a sort of a, a basing read on how all this is looking. Thanks. But um, you know, the Aussie dollar back at 92 cents, that's the correct way to look at this. I think what it does as a minimum is take a bit of heat off the RBA. I mean, in last month we were in a situation where, you know, the RBA's standpoint, I think, was that other parts of the economy are starting to pick up to replace the mining cliff, but have got more to do. 
and unemployment's going to get worse for a while, but probably and hopefully by around the end of next year, early next year, things will be starting to level off. The problem with last month's figure is that it really threw some doubt on that scenario and raised the possibility that maybe unemployment and employment growth was actually a lot softer than that sort of scenario. Today's figures, despite its rogue nature, I think winds us back from there and gets us mm. more back to the sort of level the RBA has been talking about. Uh, Rick, if you just take a, a look as well at the composition, uh, we got confirmed that there were 14,300 full-time jobs. That means that the entire uh, remainder were in part-time work, of yeah. which to qualify as part-time, yeah. correct if I'm wrong, you only need, need be employed, what, for one hour a week? Yeah. Now, another, you say it takes some heat off the Reserve Bank. How does it do that when the lion's share of these jobs today could be negligible jobs in the real economy? Oh, well, sure, that's right. So it's a matter of looking at trends. On this I think about one hour a week, it's a, it's a basic convention around the world. Most... Uh, statisticians have this concept of either some employment or no employment. Um, but of course what that means is that you have to look at underemployment and spare capacity as well in the economy as the headline employment level. So there's no sort of conspiracy here by the statisticians, although with your blue room analogy it may be <laughs> that uh, politicians are a bit eager to claim you know, good unemployment numbers, uh, you know, as being better than they are. Mm. Uh, but, yeah, look, you know, I think we've just got to look at the trends here and the basic trend I suspect underlying all this is uh, that there's still a fair amount of capacity in the economy. We may be starting to improve a bit, but we've got a fair way to go. Wages growth is still low. That's a good indicator that, uh, you know, that the boot is on the employer's, not the employee's foot at the moment. OK, Rick. Uh, for now, thank you so much. Appreciate it. That's a pleasure. All right. Let's carry on this discussion. ANZ, before this release, uh, was towards the upper end of projections, right? Uh, it was of the view we'd see a growth of about 20,000 jobs. Yep. This morning. And a 6.2% unemployment rate. So uh, the chief economist at ANZ, Warren Hogan, joins us now. And I guess we could say you were one of the closer to, uh, to seeing this result today. I don't think anyone saw this one coming, though. Warren Hogan, uh, who joins us live now from the ANZ camera. What do we make of this? Um, statistical noise, rogue numbers, some of the phrases already being used. Yeah, what do you say? Yeah, well, I think there's obviously a bit of a shock on the, the, the sheer magnitude of the jobs gain. There's no doubt that there's noise in the series. There's been some changes. It's a noisy series anyway. Um, so, look, we need to look through it. And, you know, if it wasn't 121, it was 80,000. That's strong. OK, so it's 50,000. That's strong. Yeah. We know it wasn't negative 10. We know it wasn't 15. That's outside even the ABS's boundaries of statistical probability. So this is a strong number. And the more important thing is that this now matches up to what all the other indicators are telling us. Our job ads out on Monday, up 1.4% in the month, up 8% this year. NAB survey for businesses, all the indicators there are stronger. And of course, we've got a housing market, which is not only booming in terms of turnover and prices, but construction activity is picking up, which is going to create jobs. So I don't think we need to overanalyze the noise. No one believes 121. We are creating jobs in this economy, and it's uh, all matching up to the broader narrative that we're getting a non-mining recovery, at least the first phase of it, around construction, and that's generating jobs. OK. Uh, in terms of uh, some other uh, components to this, though, do you look at that part rate uh, again as, again, just matching what you were previously saying? So a rise in activity being out there to match the job ads. Uh, I, I suppose we want to have job ads, but as you know, it's 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 what jobs match the skills. Yeah, yeah. sure. And the uh, part rate was sort of taking a somewhat alarming dip down in the last uh, six mm -hmm. months. It's now taken a huge step up, which is you know, very encouraging, back to where it was on average in the last uh, in 2013 mm -hmm. or even the early 2013. But it's still above its sort of you know five-year average, so mm -hmm. it's still got some upward sort of upside there. But it's, con it's consistent with this broader story that jobs are being created and people are being dragged into the workforce, mm -hmm. which, is, which is great news. The only soft part would be the, the, the fact that so many of the jobs were measured as part-time. This is mm -hmm. a very clumsy survey, month to month. So let's not overread it. 
um, and you know there's parts of the economy while you only need to work one hour to qualify for part-time but you can actually work two or three days and be part-time so you know there is it's yeah you know, the, there is still you know, not necessarily a concern around that we're getting jobs being created are you so you're not in this in the slightest bit concerned even though there was that definitive figure of about 14,300 uh, full-time jobs there's clearly an overweight preference for still for part-time work which was the theme of 2013 it's almost like we're seeing that that nothing's changed on that front Warren yeah, and look, we, we don't get the, the detailed breakdowns around industry um, mm. <clears throat> and so forth. Or I haven't actually had a chance to look at the state breakdown yet because the numbers have just been released. But mm. well, we need to delve into it. I wouldn't overread that. The, okay. the most important two indicators for me here are the sort of the three to five month rate of job creation. So the average that we're getting in the last little while. The unemployment rate, which has fallen a lot, is sort of broadly stable now over the last three months, and then the part rate. And that's all consistent with an economy that's recovering. So, look, I, I think, you know, the RBA, people might have been talking down the economy, and I, I think that's the wrong way to think about it. I think it's about looking for the upside over the next 12 to 18 months, and this will confirm that, and it'll make the RBA more comfortable in their view that rates are on hold. It doesn't make them want to hike rates or anything, I wouldn't have thought. It make, yeah, it just made, you know, after we had that 6.4% rate, there's a lot of kind of jaw burning about rate cuts, a lot of discussion. That was that was kind of a waste of time, all of that, wasn't it? Yeah, but look, that's what markets do, and that's what a lot of market commentators do, is they waste people's time with this sort of commentary. <laughs> um, there's a lot of volatility that's generated on the back of it, and that keeps people busy. But, you know, the economic view, the, what the Reserve Bank in particular, and what people who have to make long-term business decisions are basing it on is sort of trying to look through the noise and look at the trends. And, look, we were a little bit worried last month, but we had reason to believe there could have been some statistical noise in it. Mm -hmm. This confirms that there was. Let's look at the trend. The trend's pretty good. So I think we uh, can be confident that you know, there's, there's you know, this gradual recovery going on. Except but say that the NAB business survey earlier in the week, that's, that employment um, part of that survey showed no change, low levels, almost zero to cheer about on that front. So how are you including you know, elements like that? And that is an important read in terms of forward-looking indicators for the labour market. Yeah, look, we don't use the employment line in the NAB survey. We've you know, analysed this for years and years and looked at decades of history, and it's hopeless. For some reason, um, people, when they answer that question, they don't tell the truth, because what actually correlates with employment in the NAB survey is profitability and capacity utilisation, and both of those have been um, very strong in the last few months. So um, you just got to, you know, make sure you do your, your, your due diligence on what actually works. And I imagine that people in business are, are less willing to say they want to employ someone because um, they're conscious of headcount and this sort of thing. Mm. The reality is the profitability line is what drives uh, employment or matches up to it historically, and that was good. So it's consistent yeah. with this. I know uh, JP Morgan puts more say, weight on that yeah, element of the survey than obviously ANZ does. Yeah. So there you yeah. go. It just goes to show how you can have a house divided when it comes to uh, two economists in the same room or the same space. Uh, Warren, a a another Whoa. point, just, just to maintain this rate now, which is back to the same level as the United States, which is quite a, kind of a nice thing to take some comfort over in terms of our headline level, what would we need to see next month in terms of creation? Because the part rate having risen, normally you would have seen uh, a rise in unemployment, but for the fact we got such an overweight addition of jobs, which you say no one believes, but what do we need to add next month? Month, even if no one believes it, to keep this rate at 6.1? Yeah, look, I mean, obviously there's all the, the, the different components to it, the growth of the labour force, the part rate, but, I mean, look, just looking at the job creation side, the employment numbers, we could get a, a dip of 50,000 jobs next month on pure statistical sort of alignment, and that's still, the trend is still very strong. So okay. we're going we're gonna, to, we're probably going to get some noise. Where next month is going to be really important is if we do get some more job creation and that really and, and the unemployment rate falls and that, that's going to really sort of uh, send the message strongly that the economy is in recovery. Just like when we go back a month ago, mm -hmm. if the unemployment rate had gone higher, it would have been a real concern because everyone was saying it was just noise that took it to 6.4 and mm -hmm. it should come back down again. If it had gone to 6.6 today, that would have been a real concern. So look, yeah. the problem with a noisy series is we do have to watch uh, my view of this, looking at this data series for the last 20 years, you have to look at somewhere between three and six months of trends to really sort of get a feel for what it's telling us. Right. That's really valuable, Warren. Thank yeah. you so much, as That's always. Much. Thank you very much. ANZ's chief economist, Warren Hogan, uh, with us. And um, you know, Warren was pointing to some of those forward-looking mm -hmm. indicators, that ANZ job oh, yeah. survey saying this story of 
a jobless rate around the low sixes kind of stuck there that fits yeah. the script. But that's the kind of thing we're seeing. It matches the narrative that we've been talking about elsewhere. Let's bring in Simon Bolton, who's well. with us from Aqualis Consulting. Uh, because, Simon, it'd be good to get your view on kind of what you're seeing out there in terms of hiring intentions. Yeah, I think hiring um, intentions are high. And I've sat here over the months saying things are good. You know, we're seeing jobs filled. We're having demand from clients. And the job rate's been going up. And I'm sitting here feeling stupid every month. But I think that trend that Warren's talking about, that is the important part. And that is, that supports this sort of gradual confidence that people are building. The part-time figure's still a bit um, sort of out of whack, I think, Carson. Mm. But, you know, we have seen and continue to see an increase in activity. You know, it's gone from people saying, we might, we could, we're thinking about, to now actually doing things. We are, we need to. And that's where I think we're seeing the biggest, biggest change in sentiment, is in employers actually needing to do it. When we came, before we came on air, though, we were looking at what a three-month rolling average on job creation, was it? Was it over three months or four? Yeah, I mean, it was May, June, July, yeah. just 10,000 jobs created. I mean, that, when you take yeah. a step back, is, is pretty slim pickings, right, nationwide. Yeah, it's uh, you know it's nothing to crow about. You had 120,000 for the latest month, though. Yeah, that's yeah. looking a lot better, isn't it? Looking at say, 30,000 a month. <laughs> yeah, that's what Warren's saying. They've yeah. added all together, yeah, yeah. and you get a better narrative. Mm, um, just yeah. quickly, I've just seen. Mm. You will not be surprised. The Minister of Employment. Uh, Senator Erica Betts will now be jumping up to the cameras this month to talk what about the employment that? figures. See, we guessed yeah, it. Yeah. Nowhere to be seen last month, but maybe that's uh, now kind of in hindsight, maybe it's maybe appropriate. It was a so rogue number. It well. was a rogue number. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe they didn't need to comment. Well, there you have it. They've jumped on the bandwagon yep. as they want to do. Uh, are you not surprised? You shouldn't be. Yep. Uh, let's just sort of look again. Warren was saying uh, about next month, the, the interesting thing will be if there is job creation and, and unemployment fill, falls still further. Do you sort of see momentum play now? Because at what point, Simon, does the momentum hit the wall of we're, work we're working towards Christmas, mm. actually we're going to scale back? Yeah. Uh, our intentions. When, when is the kind of the last hurrah for 2014 likely to be? People talk about Melbourne Cup. So say right. from Melbourne Cup to from Australia November. Day, you know, things are sort of on hold. Right. Um, it will be interesting to see how that does pan out. But mm. you know, the months of November, December, January, they're quiet months. You know, not much hiring is going on. So again, I think it's going to be a you know, reading a trend through that period is going to be another thing that will throw it out of whack. You know, that will be the next anomaly we'll have, which sure. is jobs aren't being created because it's November, December. Okay. Um, and you know, th I think that the, the, the underlying trend here is that things are getting better. Clients of ours who were thinking about things are now doing things, and you know, job seekers are more confident in finding a job. Any sectors that look promising above and beyond others, you know, that you hadn't imagined would, but are? What's continuing to what we're seeing is uh, infrastructure construction. There are two things that Warren mentioned there, right. but you know, this is where I think the biggest transfer of skills from mining and engineering you know, fits in very well. Yeah. So those would be the two areas that I think at the moment we're seeing the biggest rise. Mm -hmm. But the service industries that support that. So you know, we're seeing work in the banks that we haven't seen for a while. We're seeing work in consulting firms that we haven't seen for a while. So yeah, I think that you know, that initial growth in that primary industry space does create follow-on jobs. And would you agree with what Rick Spooner was saying before, that we are seeing though the power still being with uh, the employers in terms of the, you know, what's being offered is not exactly a bed, you know, it's not a bed of roses. It, it's a job, but it's not necessarily a king's ransom. Yeah, and this Coca-Cola Amatol yeah, story we're reporting on today, yeah. wage freezes across yeah, the yeah. company, new entrants get far less than the old ones. Yeah. yeah. And we've seen this before, back in 08, 09, when you know, job sentiment, we talked a lot about employee sentiment, where people are overworked, underpaid, they're tired, they're disillusioned. You know, that forms the first part of the candidate market, is those people that have been waiting and haven't been able to find anything because there hasn't been anything out there. But now we do see that sort of turnover starting to build up. You know, teams out there that you know, haven't had people leave for months and months that are used to having a 10% healthy turnover of staff. So there's, um, you know, all of those, I think, features are going to come as the market does turn back. Speaking of the market, and, and Simon, as always, thank you so much. Thank Appreciate you. it. No um, we will see you next month. But Simon was talking.